check it out. Oh, oh, oh. Thank oh. you for coming. If you can have a seat, we'd like to begin. Well, I want to introduce these students. How are you guys? Oh, wow. Hi. Yeah, really well. Good, Hello. good. Um, you can see we've got a lot there of people are, here. Yeah, there are tons of people here. What is going on, Superintendent Luciano? Well, oh my gosh. every year we have a state of education. And every year we discuss what's going on in our district. And we have community members, principals, business leaders here. And we discuss what's happening in our district. Whoa, cool. That's really cool. Whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, isn't that the sheriff I see over there? I swear it is. Yeah, he's right <laughs> over there somewhere. He's a really nice guy, you know. Whoa, wow. <laughs> That's awesome. You guys better watch out. He's looking at you. Oh, for real, CJ, get real. <laughs> no, listen, we've got the chief of police here, both of them. These are great, great people who help and partner with us in our schools. But you know, we've got someone else here has, that has really helped in partnership with our district, and that's mm -hmm. Don Fisher. Where is Don? I think he's over here somewhere. There he is. And Don Fisher has helped us with the STEM program. As a matter of fact, the county commissioners oh, gave us about $1.2 million to start our STEM program. Mm. Wow. wow, that's awesome. I've done STEM. It's like the best. I've like done it every year. It's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sean, what were you saying? That you've done it? Done what? Oh, yeah. I've done STEM programs. That is so awesome. Thank you so much. Cool. Cool. I'm glad to hear it. So listen, the theme of this particular state of education really has to do with career readiness and how we're helping you in creating a career plan for the future and what we have actually done to prepare you. So can you share with us, is there anyone willing to volunteer? Wow. That's awesome. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, for real, miss, I can do that. I can do that for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. I'll go first. All right. Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah, everybody, like, for real. My name is Kevin, you know, and like, I've been at the Business Academy in St. Cloud, you know, St. Cloud High. Man, I tell you, it's cool, it's cool. Like, you know, they tell you how to get the money. You know, I went on this Campus Express thing, like to Valencia Community College, you know, over at the Osceola campus. Uh -huh. And like, man, that was like, well, that was like last semester. And it was like, it was cool, like for real. Like, like right now, like that's where I'm going because it's like close to home, you know what I'm saying? But man, Valencia, it like rocks, you know what? It rocks. Well, I'm yeah. glad to hear it. Valencia rocks, look at that. And St. Cloud rocks by allowing you to go through that business academy and our campus yeah, express is cool. really helpful. Cool. cool. Yeah, that was really cool. Thank you That's so right, much. Please. Is there anyone else yeah, who wants yeah. to share? I will. Okay. Okay, go ahead. I'm excited to hear it, come on. Okay. Um, my name is Maria and I'm in the international vacuum baccalaureate program at Gateway High School. <sighs> and I am proud to say that I applied and I have been accepted to Princeton. And if it weren't for the rigorous classes that I had in high school, I don't know that I would be able to handle an Ivy League um, education and the challenges there. And I hope to become a chemical engineer. Good for you, I'm so proud of you. I know there was a lot of hard work with that international baccalaureate program but obviously it paid off. Thank you. Yeah. Who else would like to say something? Oh, well, yeah, I will, definitely. Okay, all right, go ahead. Um, hi, everyone, um, my name is Ed, and, uh, well, <laughs> I'm gonna be all that I can be. <laughs> I'm actually gonna join the Army and follow in my dad's footsteps. So I'm in the uh, ROTC program at Lit uh, Liberty High School right now, and uh, uh, hopefully I'm going to proudly serve my country. So that's what I hope to do. Hooah! <laughs> you know, thank you so much in advance because I know that you'll make a difference in protecting our country. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, I'll do it. Okay, go ahead. Talk. Okay, so, like, I'm CJ, 
and um, I'm in my senior year at the Professional Technical High School. Oh, you probably know it as like PATHS. And I'm working toward uh, the industry certification now in the dual enrollment at TECO. So when I graduate, I plan to enroll in the licensed practical nursing program at the new St. Cloud TECO campus. So I'm going to be eligible to take the examination to practice as an LPN. So watch out. I might be one of your nurses one day. <laughs> All right. Well, thank yeah. you so much. We're always going to need nurses. And I'm glad you're going to pass and moving on to TECO. Good for you. Uh -huh. and I guess we have one more. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, okay. Last but not least. <laughs> oh, jeez. Whoa, whoa, so many people. Um, I'm Sean. Um, I actually, like, really didn't know what I wanted to do when I first was in school and after I was going to graduate and all until I got to be a part of the biomedical science program at Celebration High School. It was so awesome, you guys. You all should have done it. It's so cool. And um, I also participated in the medical pipeline program in the summer where we visited local hospitals and now I know I mean I'm, I am absolutely determined that I am definitely going to do something in the medical field and so because of that like I figured I might as well stay here close to home and go to UCF so I'm going to be a knight <laughs> a knight strong <laughs> yeah good job good job Students, thank you so much for participating in this because, again, I want our audience here to know what we're doing to prepare you for your future. And I really appreciate it. So now it's time for you to go to class. Oh, man, for real. Oh, come on. We can hang around. We've got lots of good ideas. We'll I'm, just stick with you guys. I am sure that you would have plenty to talk about. But right now, we're yeah. done, and we need you to go back to class. Thank you. <sighs> yes, Bess. We'll go. Thanks, ma'am. Hey, everybody. Have a good one. Bye-bye now. Bye. -bye now. <laughs> Well, have you ever seen something like that? Isn't that kind of amazing? I mean, this, this is something brand new and different. It's actually uh, Teach Live, and this comes from the University of Central Florida. And we have Dr. Carrie Straub out here. Where are you, Carrie? From UC there, She's all the way back there. Um, and we have uh, Dr. Sherry Barham, who's not here right now, but I want you to know that these two individuals from UCF are the ones who are helping us with this particular initiative. And it's really an initiative that has to do with professional development. It helps our teachers actually talk to students, but they're avatars. They're avatars. So you know what? A teacher can make a mistake. And then they can say, wait a minute. I've got to do it differently next time. I have to say it differently. But think of what this could do for you. Think of a realtor, a salesperson, a police officer, whereas you have an avatar and you can ask the right questions. You can train that individual to sell something. So I just wanted to show you that this is the way in which we outperform other districts because we are the only district in Florida that's doing Teach Live. Professional development is really essential to our community, and I'm sure that all of you have had a teacher that has made a difference in your life. As a matter of fact, as I say that, I'm sure someone comes to your mind. I had Sister Marion Louise in high school, and I can tell you Sister Marion Louise made a difference, and the reason for that is because she was caring, loving, knowledgeable, and funny. She was able to develop relationships, but she knew her stuff. She was my science teacher, and she really got us engaged. So again, when we talk about what's going on in our district, that professional development of our teachers to ensure that our children have the knowledge that they need in order to graduate is essential to us. And as we talk about this, I want to mention our motto, 
which is student achievement, is our number one priority. And at this point, I would like to introduce our board members. Um, Tim Weishire is very sick, because you know that he would be here. I think he has the flu. So we wish him well and hope that he recuperates quickly. Vice Chairman Kelvin Soto is here. Kelvin? Where? Uh, Kelvin is here. And thank you. How about Ricky Booth? Ricky Booth is here, all the way over there. Clarence Thacker. Clarence is over there as well. And Mr. Wheeler, Jay Wheeler, where are you? There's Jay as well. Thank you. Thank you. We all work collaboratively to get things done in our district. But the, one of the first things that I want to share with you is our goals. And we create these goals together. This is not done one-on-one. -on -one. It's not done in isolation. It's done with our board members and with you. Many of you sitting in this auditorium here have participated in some fashion in creating strategies for this district to make us successful. And some of the things, obviously, number one, student achievement, that is our priority. Technology, an example was the Teach Live, but also the fact that all of our students currently use their telephones, iPads, et cetera, in, uh, in their classrooms. They need to learn how to use these, these uh, equipment so that they can learn, because they're using them all of the time, all of the time. And it's our teachers that need the professional development to make sure that they're the ones that could use it as well. I think the kids are just so savvy, but our teachers, they're having a harder time with it, uh, especially the veteran ones. The younger ones, they're on it. So technology is really, really important, especially also with the fact that our assessments now, most of the assessments, statewide assessments, are done on computer. Really critical. So, the other part, of course, is having a safe and positive environment, and we, we appreciate everyone assisting us with that, especially law enforcement, um, through our SROs, and any time that we need any kind of assistance, they're there for us. And also, we have resources that we really use uh, specifically for students. The majority of our funding goes for teachers and resources within our schools. So, we do have the goals, and they are on your table, and you'll be able to take them home with you and look at them. But we do have a vision of outperforming all other districts. We know that this is well beyond just school grades. As a matter of fact, we have no idea what's going to happen this coming year in regards to school grades, since the DOE has not yet determined how they're going to calculate it. Um, but as always, we're flexible, and our job is really to teach children the standards and do the best that they can. And hopefully, you might have noticed before, during uh, breakfast, that there was a presentation going on. During that presentation, there were several areas at which we have outperformed other districts. But in this particular case, I want to talk a little bit about e economic development, because I know that what this is all about. I've spoken to so many of you, and we have had superintendent luncheons, roundtables, and had a conversation and said, what is it that we can do to ensure that we have students that are graduating that are ready to go to work or go to a vocational technical school or college? And so I understand how important our schools are to you. They need to look beautiful because you're gonna bring people here, realtors are bringing, uh, uh, the city and county managers are bringing people, trying to bring them here. So in reality, we do understand that it is essential for our children to do well because economic development depends upon that. So what are we doing about this? We're always working on improving student achievement every single day, and that is a matter of professional development again Having teachers being able to create lesson plans, being able to sh ensure that they're meeting the needs of individual children. So we have assessments that we do, diagnostics that we do, whereas the children take a test and then the teacher can determine, do I have to reteach or can I go on or can I accelerate? We're always looking at meeting the needs of our individual children. So the purpose of these assessments and this professional development is, is for one reason and one reason only, and that is to make sure that our children graduate and are ready for either a vocational, technical school, but specifically for a career. So we want our children to be knowledgeable and skilled, 
and we want to make sure that they will be able to go out into the world and get a job that they really want, a, a job of their choosing. As, as you saw with those avatars, that those children are talking about the experiences that they're having because of partnerships that we have with you, and then they can determine what they feel they can do in the future. So we don't create this culture just in high school. It begins in the elementary school, and we are developing a culture of success with our children. But I want you to know that all children don't believe in themselves. So our job is to ensure that we encourage our children so that they will believe in themselves and know that they will be successful in the future. Some examples of that are school-based strategies. We have advanced placement classes. We have dual enrollment classes at TECO, at, with UCF, et cetera. Information nights. We have several things that are going on with our district. These strategies are helping our students. But in elementary school, if you ever go on a Friday to an elementary school, you're gonna find everyone wearing a T-shirt or polo shirt that has their college name on it. Why? Because we want to start there with elementary students, telling them and encouraging them to say, this is where I went, this is where you could go. It starts in elementary school, and then in middle school, and then high school is the key. As a matter of fact, this is a picture. I went to Poinciana High School one day, and they have this big bulletin board. And you can see that these are children's pictures, and they're holding up a piece of paper and that's actually their acceptance letter. And as I'm looking, I went, oh, Hunter College, that's my alma mater. And I was so thrilled to see that. At every single school, you will see students' pictures posted and the name of the school at which they have applied and been accepted. And we are so proud of that. And our children love to see their pictures up. So before, it wasn't such a big deal, but now, something like this, something as simple as this, picking, picking, putting a picture up, makes all the difference in the world. But we also do other ad things that advance our children, such as the IB program that one of the uh, uh, avatars spoke about. As you know, we have the International Baccalaureate program in our elementary school, our middle school, and our high school. So it's a feeder pattern, which is really an accelerated program. But we also have another program, it's called AVID, and that's Advanced Via Indi Individual Determination. And these are the kids that are in the middle. I don't know about any of you, but I was kind of one of those kids that was in the middle. I wasn't sure would I go to college or not. You know, I was really the first one in the family to go to college. I mean, there were just a lot of things that were going on in life. These are the kids that are not sure. So we have this particular program that helps these children see the future. We have in elementary, middle, and high schools. We started only in one area, and we have expanded across the entire district because we know that the practices that AVID has are good for all. And it really creates a college-going culture. So AVID, as I said, is usually a child that this is the very, very first child in the family that goes to college. It's, it's amazing. These are kids that are usually underserved in our four-year colleges. They often come from low income, and sometimes they have special circumstances. But I will tell you what, we see these children progress and often have higher scores than most of the other children because of the strategies that they're learning. So we want our children to always think and talk about their future, about college, where they want to go, what they want to do, the careers they want to pursue, and we want our children to envision themselves as successful in the future. I want to show you that in this particular slide, these are some colleges and universities that, that 2014 graduates uh, received acceptance letters from, from out of state. And you can see that they are um, amazing colleges that our children are attending. But I want you to know that sometimes our children just don't know what they don't know. If they have never been to an institution such as um, any kind of post-secondary, they have no idea of what's going on. So Celebration Foundation and the Education Foundation 
uh, along with Valencia um, and Tico, we've, we have this partnership where we take our children to those particular facilities. Because when, this is what we've learned, when initially we're talking to the children and you ask them, well, would you consider going to Valencia or Tico? Do you know what their response is? Oh, I don't know. You know, I'm not really sure. I've heard about it. Sometimes they haven't even heard of Tico. And then you turn around and you take them to the facility. They walk it. They talk to people. They ask questions. It makes all the difference in the world. When they come back from this field trip, guess what happens? The majority of those students now say, that's an opportunity for me. It changes completely. So I really do want to thank Celebration uh, Foundation and the Education Foundation because they really have done an uh, incredible job. Last year, um, they, we had approximately 1,000 students who went through this Campus Express and now we've, this year, 2,000 children in middle school and high school. And we are already planning, and poor Kathleen Polinsky almost had a stroke, when I said, we want to send elementary school kids too. And she said, okay. So next year, guess what? Imagine, imagine a fifth grader going to a college and walking it. Do you think that that will make a difference in their life? Yes, yes. That's what we need. We need to plant that seed early on so that they know it is a possibility. That's what we do. We create that in their minds. And then we look at, I just wanted to share with you some of the pathways to success that we have from elementary to high school. This, these are pathways that eventually will lead to high wage careers. And so in elementary school, they have their regular classes, but they have exploratory classes. And these are exploratory classes that deal with careers, and they talk about them, and, and they read about them, and they may go to field trips, that, and they may ask speakers to come in and speak with them. Middle school, very similar, except that now in our middle schools, these children can be accelerated so that they can have high school credit classes. So again, if the children, because often people say, Melba, you, you're always looking at those children who are the lowest achieving and working on them. What about the high-end kids? This is the high-end kids, those middle school kids that are capable of doing high school work. And then we go on into our high school, and again, that pathway of looking at knowing that not all children are going to go to college. We all know that's, that's impossible. It's not going to happen. So we have to give them alternatives, and we have to give them an opportunity to, to experience those ex alternatives. And as you can see on the far, far right-hand corner, our avatars spoke about that. So we also have new career uh, and technical academies. And you will find a matrix, it's, it's very, very colorful, on the table. But on the screen, you'll see the newest academies. So is, is Tom Hurd here? Tom, are you here? He's usually very quiet, you know. But Tom Hurd and the St. Cloud City Council assisted us with the Business Academy at St. Cloud High School. And again, having that partnership is absolutely amazing. We have a digital arts and gaming academy at, high, at Celebration, Harmony, and Poinciana High School with a partnership with EA Sports. We started a Cambridge International program at Liberty High School, which is between Avid and IB. Horticulture at, at OHS and lodging op operations at Osceola High School. So these academies are not done in isolation. We just don't go out there and say, well, what do you think? We talk to you. We talk to you and say, where do we think we can have these children go into jobs, that they will be successful and they will have earned good wages? So what kind of programs have we had? Well, I'm going to tell you the medical pipeline. One of the avatars spoke about it. The, the medical pipeline is absolutely amazing. And you can see on the right-hand side the partners that we have. And we have elementary, middle, and high school students going through these programs starting in third grade so that they can see that 
it's not just a doctor or a nurse. We had a student that went through it and said, oh, I knew I wanted to be this, and came back and said, oh my God, I saw that robot, and I think I want to do that. That they start to see the potential that there's so much more. So these partners are assisting us in leading the, the way for our students, and I want to thank you so much. But I want you to know that we had a conversation in regards to what's next. So what's next? You, many of the community members said, listen, construction, it's, the trade is, is different, and we need people there. So we're, we're beginning a new program, and it's called Building Osceola. And this one has to do with careers in the construction trade and looking for high demand and, and high wage careers. And also looking that our students can have industry certification in our high schools. So we're really, really proud that members of the community have come to us and said, this is need and we're working with you. Thank you. So economic development isn't only K through 12 because we also have to work with adults. And TICO, TICO is a perfect example of this. As you are aware, we expanded TICO from Simpson Row to Poinciana and St. Cloud. People in, in Poinciana were taking a bus and taking two hours to get to the TICO in Simpson Road, and now it's right around the corner for them, and we're really, really pleased with that, as well as the opportunity for those individuals in St. Cloud to, to go into some courses at TICO. And the other thing is that our high school students are able to take dual enrollment classes at our TICO uh, facilities as well. And the next slide shows you the careers that are possible for these students and these adults, and it really is a huge step, I believe, in our economic development. The next thing we're going to talk about is the STEM expansion, science, technology, engineering, and math. And this is where you heard where the county government has helped us in expanding our STEM program by giving us $1.2 million, and then Walt Disney Resort and the Education Foundation also assist us with es expanding this. And we know that the jobs that are coming, we, we really don't know what they're about, but I do know one thing. I know that they will be focused on science, technology, math, etc. So we have begun articulation to ensure that we will have good, good employees in the future. Something that's happening that's brand new, again, outperforming on all other districts, here's a perfect example. We're gonna have the very first STEM mobile lab. The very first. This is what is a huge bus, and in the bus will be labs. And this bus will travel from one place to another in our elementary schools currently, when we start the next academic year, and they will be able, children will be exposed to hands-on experiences, but not only will students, but the community and parents will have an opportunity to go into this mobile lab and see what, what this is about, which is really, again, bringing something special to our schools and our district. So we're really thrilled because in reality, we will be asking many of you to help us in discussing some of the labs that we want for our future. Because in reality, the future is ensuring that all our children graduate and that they have a plan. Because it's not just saying, well, what do you want to do when you graduate? And you know, when they say, I don't know, I'm so uncomfortable with that. So our goal is to ensure that not in your senior year, not in your junior year, but definitely by your senior year, you would have a plan of action so that your future is somewhat set. Will it change? Of course, it changes for many of us. I wanted to be a doctor when I first started until I took an education course and it changed my life. So it's just a matter though of helping them see that there's a direction and that they will be successful and earn high wages. So what other partnerships do we have that are helping us with this? The partnership definitely with Valencia and the Education Foundation and God College. This is the second year that we have this community collaboration. And I'm going to tell you that this October, 
again, Kathleen Polinsky is amazing. We come up with the strangest things sometimes, and she's so flexible. We said, can we have a bunch of high school, high school juniors come and like spend an entire day? And she said, oh, I'm not really sure. I don't know how we'll do that. But do you know what? In the conversation, she turned around and said, I think there's some days when we don't have kids, but the staff is there. Why not do that? She allowed us to take 1,100 juniors to actually spend an entire day at Valencia. So thank you, Kathleen. In addition, they were able to give us funding for three transitional coaches. These are, every single school has counselors. Oh gosh, those people, they, they work so diligently. If you ever see a counselor, they say they're a counselor, give them a big hug, okay? Say, we love you, we love you. Because there's so many kids and there's so many few that they can really, really touch. So having these transitional coaches really helps us because they assist these children in applying for the college applications and for financial aid. And in addition, we have had some vertical articulation where elementary, listen, elementary, middle, and high school teachers have met with the professors at Valencia to have conversation in regards to what are the needs of our children and how they will be better prepared so they don't have to take remedial classes when they go. That is what we're doing in our district to prepare our children for the future. So on that note, I want to introduce Kathleen Polinsky, president of the Valencia at Osceola and Lake Nona. Well, thank you so very much. It is, uh, I have to say, it's truly a blessing to have the opportunity to work in partnership with the best superintendent in the state of Florida. Let's please recognize Melba for that. Melba and I collaborate regularly on a variety of different initiatives, all of which focus on supporting student success in our community. And I believe that we have a unique relationship, one that you don't often find between a college and a school district. And it's one that allows us to truly move the needle on student success in Osceola County. It is also an honor and a privilege for me to have the opportunity to work at Valencia. As you already know, Valencia was selected as the best community college in the country and our graduation rate is three times that of our peer institutions nationwide. <laughs> Oftentimes we're asked, what's your secret? Other colleges and universities will ask us for best practices in hopes of replicating our success. And this morning, I'm going to let you in on our secret. There are two, actually. First, we believe that anyone can learn anything under the right conditions. We reject the notion that some students just can't do math or that there are some students who will just never be good writers. We refuse to believe that there is an algebra gene and if you don't have it, you're destined to a life where you cannot simplify rational expressions. <laughs> no, 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 we believe that anyone can learn anything under the right conditions and our job is to identify and create the conditions that lead to student success. That's our first secret. The second secret, the second secret is that our students are amazing. They have the most unbelievable talents and they truly are gifted. Quite frankly, they're brilliant, they're determined, they pers persevere in the face of adversity and they have big dreams for the future. They're amazing. But the second part to the secret is this. Our students are no different than the students at any other college. It's just that we believe that our students will change the world. We don't see them as a problem to be solved, wishing they would stop bothering us and getting in the way of our real work. Rather, we recognize that they are the sole reason that Valencia exists, and we make sure that they believe in themselves as much as we believe in them. So that's it. That's the secret to Valencia's success. And finally, I must say that it's truly a blessing to have the opportunity to work right here in Osceola County. This is an amazing community with tremendous leadership that has a clear vision for the future. You have rallied around our students to make sure that they have every opportunity to be successful. You have supported our superintendent as she works to lead the district to be the best in the state. 
and you have bought into this crazy notion that Osceola County will one day have the highest college going rate in the state of Florida. And I believe with all my heart, we will get there. If I have learned one thing about Osceola County, it's that there is absolutely nothing that can stop us when we're working together to achieve a common goal. It's hard to believe, but Valencia is actually approaching our 50th anniversary, and Valencia was founded in 1967. And I found it interesting that since Valencia opened, more than 31,000 graduates of the school district of Osceola County have continued their education at Valencia. That, that's amazing. And of those, uh, more than 11,000 have completed an associate's degree from Valencia. And while these numbers are large and they show the impact of the pathway that has been built in Osceola to allow students to continue their education after high school, I found data from more recent years truly astounding. If you look at the time frame between 2008 and 2013, nearly 11,000 graduates of the school district of Osceola County attended Valencia. And in that same time frame, more than 7,000 associate degrees were awarded to alumni of Osceola County high schools. So as you can see, Valencia's impact in Osceola County is really a recent phenomenon. One third of the enrollment from Osceola County can be attributed to just the last five years. And what's more impressive is that more than 60% of Valencia degrees awarded to students who are from Osceola County have been awarded during just the last five Valencia graduation ceremonies. And these data are why I believe we're truly just getting started in Osceola County. Now, as, Super Lu as Superintendent Luciano mentioned, we are working hard to increase the college going rate in Osceola County through a grassroots community-based effort called Got College. Now, to be clear, Got College is not about increasing enrollment at Valencia. It is about increasing our county's overall college going rate. It is about supporting our students' aspirations and career goals wherever that may lead them. Now, you've heard me talk in the past about how Osceola County's college going rate historically has lagged behind the state's average. And where about 41% of Osceola County's high school graduates enroll in a public post-secondary institution the fall following their high school graduation, the state average is about 52%. So we've seen this difference, Osceola at 41 and the state average about 52%. Two years ago, we launched, our, we launched our Got College efforts and it feels like these efforts are having a tremendous impact in our community. But the most recent data from our state about our college going rate is nearly four years old and it will be hard to wait until 2019 to know if our efforts are making a difference. So I'm pleased to show with you some data this morning that I believe serve as a leading indicator of the impact of our GOT College work. Now these data are about enrollment at Valencia and to reiterate, GOT College is not just about Valencia. However, of the students who go to college in Osceola County, about three out of four come to Valencia, so I think looking at our enrollment numbers is a good place to start. You'll see that between 2008 and 2010, enrollment of previous year high school graduates at the Osceola campus was pretty consistent, just about 1,200 students a year. In 2011 and 2012, you start to see an uptick in the enrollment in recent high school graduates. And then in 2013, and particularly so in 2014, the data starts to get really interesting. In fact, between, between fall of 2011, where our state reported data ended, and fall of 2014, you will see more than a 20% increase in the number of previous year high school graduates at the Osceola campus. So it's still too early to calculate what our college going rate is this year and how it compares to the rest of the state. But these data convince me that our efforts together are working. So again, what's our secret? What's working in our community to see this tremendous increase in college enrollment? Because of course, when word gets out about our success, everyone will wanna know what's our best practice, what's the takeaway? And I think the secret, honestly, is the one thing that can't be taken away. It's the thing that can't be replicated anywhere else. It's the power of the Osceola County community. For example, we recognize that many families in our community didn't understand the value of a higher education. 
Through our GOT College efforts, we have held and continue to hold a number of information sessions for students and their parents to inform them that there are projected to be nearly 400,000 new and replacement jobs in Orange and Osceola counties in the next several years, but the majority of those jobs will require some sort of post-secondary credential. We've shared that earning a college degree may be the best investment our students can make in their future. As someone in Central Florida with an associate's degree will make, on average, nearly half a million dollars more in the course of their lifetime than someone who only holds a high school diploma. We also recognize that many of our families in our community believe that they cannot afford to send their children to college. We recognize that many families were unaware of the financial aid that is available to them and were overwhelmed by the federal application for financial aid. So leaders from throughout the community have organized financial aid nights to help parents understand how they can afford to send their child to college. And we learned that it's important to communicate the message that a degree from Valencia costs only about $6,000. With all of the media attention surrounding the student debt crisis, the message about affordability often gets lost. In fact, the tuition for an entire year at Valencia often costs less than the meal plan at many residential colleges and universities. We need to make sure that our families understand they can afford to send their children to college. We discovered that many students in our community had never set foot on a college campus, and we're so blessed by the Campus Express that you heard about earlier, which literally allows thousands of our students in Osceola County to tour Tico and Valencia. And finally, we learned that we have to help many of our students in Osceola County believe that they are college material. I will never forget, about two years ago, I was given a presentation at Gateway High School. And at the end, I opened the presentation up to questions. One student tentatively raised his hand and said, you know, I want to go to college, but I don't think my GPA is good enough to get into Valencia. I was thoroughly confused. I couldn't, under I couldn't understand what he was asking. As you know, the joke about community colleges is that the only admissions requirement is that you can fog a mirror. I couldn't comprehend that a student would believe he wasn't good enough to get into Valencia. And here's where our Valencia College transition coaches, those amazing individuals who are working in our high schools directly with students can have a tremendous impact. They can have those one-on-one -on -one conversations with students who might be doubting themselves to help them believe that they are college material, that they're good enough to get into Valencia or UF or Harvard or MIT or wherever it may be that they dream of going. And because of this one student who asked me if he was good enough to get into Valencia, we've worked with the transition coaches to send a letter to every graduating senior to let them know that they had met the requirements to be accepted into Valencia. And I wonder for how many of those families that received that letter, that was the first college acceptance letter their family had ever gotten. And I hope that for some families, that made a tremendous difference. Thank you. So where do we go from here? First, we plan to continue to expand our program offerings at the Osceola campus so that students have the opportunity to earn a credential that will lead them to the career of their dreams. We are adding the full business and hospitality management degree at the Osceola campus next year, and we will start offering courses in the paralegal program with an eye toward adding the full program at the campus in the near future. In addition, our Lake Nona campus will offer a two-year degree in biotechnology, which is meant to lead directly to employment in Medical City and other biotechnology firms. And our offerings at the Lake Nona campus directly support our Osceola County students. As for many students who attend Harmony and St. Cloud High Schools, the Lake Nona campus is their most convenient and accessible option. Now speaking of accessibility, whoops, I, I gave it away. I'm gonna be talking about Poinciana. Can you go back one slide for me? There we go, thank you so much. Um, this map actually shows the location of Valencia's current campuses. They're represented by red diamonds, as well as the addresses of all of our students. You'll see those as tiny blue dots. I know this map is difficult to read, but the important thing is that you'll see a cluster of students living in the Point Siena area. And I can't tell you how much I admire those students. For students who are living in Point Siena who have a car, the commute to the Osceola campus can range anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour and a half, as you well know. But for students who rely on public transportation, it is two and a half to three hours each way for these students to travel to and from campus. And you would not believe how many students do just that. So because of this, could you go to the next one for me? I may have, thank you. We are very excited about building a campus in Point Siena. We're in the planning process now. We're working to identify the academic programs that will be offered there. 
We'll also know more about the timing of when the campus might open after this legislative session. We're very fortunate to have received a million dollars in seed money from the state last year, and Valencia's Board of Trustees set aside an additional two million dollars this summer. We'll be working with the legislature this year to request additional funds for the campus, and assuming that the funding does come over the next two years, we could be open by the fall of 2017. But again, it all depends on the funding. I would like to thank Senator Soto and Representative LaRosa for their amazing leadership in the state legislature to bring a campus to Point Siena. They have been instrumental in converting the dream of a campus in Point Siena into reality, so thank you. I also want to thank the Osceola County Commission as they stepped up to the plate to provide the land for the Point Siena campus, which will be located at the intersection of Pleasant Hill Road and Reeves Road. And here you'll see where our Point Siena campus will be in relation to our Osceola campus. And they're only about 10 miles apart, but as you know, miles in Point Siena are unlike miles anywhere else <laughs> in the world. And this is just an aerial view of the land designated. It's parcel A, if you can see it. It's right on Pleasant Hill Road. It's where the temporary fire station is now. And again, thanks to our county commissioners and the county manager for your support. And in closing, I'd like to tell a story about one of our students. This is Alex. And Alex came to Valencia three years ago. She joined our REACH program, which was developed to help students who place into remedial coursework in all three areas, in reading, writing, and math. And historically, students at Valencia who require prep coursework in all three areas have a graduation rate of about 15% after five years. It got to the point where we were having discussions about whether or not it was ethical to take students' tuition dollars if they had such deep remediation needs given the likelihood of them being successful. So we developed REACH, which is a program in which students take their entire first year of courses together as a learning community. And the results of the program have been very promising. We've seen students who have the lowest probability of success doing better in the REACH program than students who come to Valencia with the highest test scores. Each semester I hold a luncheon to celebrate the students in the REACH program who earn all A's and B's, those who make the Dean's List or the President's List. And it was at one of these luncheons that I met Alex. And after talking with her, I learned that she's first in her family to attend college and she's very proud of being a first generation student. She also shared that she lives in Point Siena. And I asked her how long of a drive she had to campus. She shared with me that she didn't have a car and relied on the bus to get to class every day. And I asked her how long it took, and that's how I learned that the bus commute between Point Siena and the Osceola campus takes about two and a half hours each way. And would you believe that Alex has near perfect attendance at Valencia? She's in her last semester, and after graduating this spring, she will transfer to UCF to pursue a degree in hospitality. And I stay in touch regularly with Alex, and one day I asked her where she found the motivation to spend five hours every day on the bus to go to college. And her response floored me. She said that her biggest motivation is her little brother and her little sister. She wants more than anything for them to go to college, and she wants to make sure that they don't have an excuse not to. So she figures when there's a Valencia campus in Point Siena in a few years, her brother and sister cannot possibly have a reason not to go to college after they've seen her deal with this commute every day, fall, spring, and summer for three years. She's doing all of this in an effort to create a better future for her little brother and her little sister. And as I said at the beginning of my remarks, we are truly blessed with the most amazing students. Thank you. It's a strange transition, but bear with us. Um, we we want to share something with you. The, the Education Foundation, uh, Tommy, Tommy Tompkins, are you here? Tommy, I, t I saw you, where are you? Would you stand up a minute, please? Tommy, where are you? Come on, where are you? There he is, he's right over there, Tommy. Tommy was the founder of the Education Foundation 30 years ago, 30 years ago. And the foundation has done such incredible work for our students and our teachers, and we just wanted everyone to know that they're celebrating their 30th year, their 30th birthday, and would you show them what's going on here? Yeah. And this is a sign. So how about if we just applaud our Education Foundation for everything that they have done for our schools.
Kathleen, you're going to talk about the foundation I now, know, right? I you know. see, she plays several roles here. So while it makes for a bit of an awkward stage transition, it is an honor and a privilege to serve as chair of, of the board of the Education Foundation of Osceola County. So on behalf of the foundation, I want to thank you for joining us this morning. The foundation is proud to have hosted this event for five years as part of its commitment to serving the needs of the school district of Osceola County. As an organization whose mission it is to bring resources and people together to support and enhance education in Osceola County, the foundation has truly made a significant impact over the past 30 years. I encourage you to review the fact book that is in front of you to learn more about the foundation's amazing programs, including Got College, as you've already heard about this morning, as well as other great programs like a gift for teaching, which provides school supplies for children in need, Bookmark Buddies, which provides literacy mentors to third grade students, and the foundation's scholarship programs, which award more than 200 scholarships to graduating high school seniors every year. In September 2014, an independent research study of 100 education foundations was conducted by Dewey and Associates. And the Education Foundation of Osceola County, your education foundation, was recognized as eighth in the nation. Let's congratulate the foundation on that. And we're also very proud that they were recognized as the third best education foundation in the state of Florida. For 30 years, you have helped the foundation to serve our school district and to make a significant impact in our community. And we look forward to continue our partnership with you, our community leaders, as we continue to make a difference in the lives of our students, our teachers, and our community. We ask that you please fill out the small contact card at your seat and leave it at your table so that the foundation may stay in touch with you. As the school district's foundation, we are looking forward to serving for another 30 years and beyond. It is now my pleasure to introduce Mr. Clarence Thacker, a member of the board of the school district of Osceola County. Good morning, thank you for being here. We're glad you're here, we want you here, we need you here. Um, I'm gonna talk about why we need you here in just a second. Uh, I'm pinch hitting for our chairman, Tim Washire today, who is out uh, under the weather. So based on that, I found out last night. So I get a clicker with nothing to click. <laughs> I hope there's no avatars behind me and, uh, and it will make it very short and sweet. Uh, they asked me to talk about uh, the role of our school district and economic growth, uh, which I will do. But prior to that, uh, I just want to thank uh, uh, Mel Luciano and Kathleen Plinsky, if, if you listen to the passion in both these women's talks and their speeches about what it's taking and the drive to push our students forward, it's amazing. When you think about an Alice um, that uh, Dr. Plinsky talked about, many of us in this room that I know, we grew up and it was not a question of going to college, it was where we were going to go to college. Think of a child who's got to ride a bus two and a half hours. Think of a child who's got parents who are not educated, who do not encourage a child, not only do they not encourage a child to go to college, they discourage a child. They say there's a job at McDonald's right now, you've graduated, go get a job. So it's, it's the odds against some of these children are really astronomical and the passion and the drive, I think, and the opportunities we're providing are pretty amazing. So uh, thank you both very much. Uh, I want to just touch on a couple challenges we're facing in the school district and then kind of go through with uh, some real opportunities that I have, we believe. Uh, first one will probably surprise everybody, funding. Uh, facing a severe lack of funding for our capital needs, for our operational needs, everything we need to drive this district forward. Um, we are facing it, the school district, the county's facing it, the city's facing it, so not a common problem. Uh, the other thing is the perception of our school district in a community that was trying to grow. We've got projects going on. We're trying to bring in economic development. People want to come to a place where they believe they have a really good school district where they want to move their employees, move their families, open a business, and send their kids to school. Our perception today is probably not where we want it to be. We've got to move that perception forward. Um, if you look at uh, some of the problems with our funding, you can just look at Orange County and give you a few statistics here just to kind of put in perspective of where we're at. 
Orange County, their property values alone are about five times what the property values are in the tax rolls of Osceola County. No big surprise, much bigger there. What is a little surprising is they only have three times as many students as we have here. So you can see just the amount of ad valorem revenue they've got coming in every day is far higher per student than we get. They've also got some additional sales tax out there that they're receiving. They just passed and they passed another uh, millage for four years. So funding, some places have done things different for their funding. Osceola County is still kind of a young county. We've got a tremendous amount of land and very few people and we're all clustered right here in St. Cloud and Kissimmee pretty much. So it creates an issue for us. We've got to get higher paying jobs in to start raising our values. Uh, the county is working on the center project, a huge, huge boon for this county, hopefully. It's gonna bring higher paying jobs. For that project, in my mind, to be accessed to this community in the county, those people, for the first 10 people that are making six figures or more living there, we need them to build homes and live here or buy homes and live here. If they all get on the turnpike right there and go to Windermere, we're in trouble. We've gotta find ways to attract that and keep people here. Higher value homes, start to help pay for our way. Uh, we know from an economic study done probably 10 years ago, which is dated, but it's probably still fairly accurate, it, costs, it takes a home value in the neighborhood of $200,000 to $250,000 to pay for itself, to pay for the fire protection, the schools, the, all the services it gets. The median value home on our tax rolls right now is somewhere between one hundred and fifty dollars and $160,000. So we've got to bring the economic development with the higher paying job to start lifting the whole community up as much as we possibly can. Quality education system is a key driver in getting people to move here and wanting to live here and raise their children here. Uh, companies look very, very quickly at the quality of an education system. We are doing some things really, really well in our district right now. It gets back to perception. That's what we need you for. We need the communities to start talking about the good things that are going on in our school district. When people say, how is your school district, instead of rolling your eyes, going, oh, so, so. We need people to start realizing the things we're talking about here today that are going well, start talking about it. We need you to be our cheerleaders, quite frankly. We need the community to rally behind the schools. I can tell you, the school district and the community will not rally on its own. It's gonna take everybody in this room, it's gonna take your friends, and it's gonna take uh, everybody else in the community to start believing in what's going on here, start helping with what's going on. A lot of people are already participating in many ways through the foundation and through the uh, uh, some of the programs, the mentorship program stuff we have going on, but that is the only way I believe that the school district, perception of the school district will rise. The perception, that, like I say, you've seen some of the things that are going on that are truly amazing in our school district right now. We're not the best. We've got 7,000 employees, 3,500 teachers, 55, 60,000 kids. Everybody there is not perfect. They will not be perfect, but there's a lot of things going well. We've got to get our graduation rates up. Um, they're doing things right now, those uh, Valencia numbers that went from 1,200 to 1,600 in a four-year period roughly, those are pretty amazing numbers in my mind when you look at the percentage in a very short period of time. So things are going in the right direction. Um, lastly, we had a workshop last night at the school board and the city of Kissimmee was there, uh, the city manager and the county manager. We've talked about some of the funding issues. The thing I'm very excited about, we're going to meet collaboratively with the county commission, the two cities, and the school board in the next 30 days or so, we're gonna try and figure out as a community, what do we all need? What is the best approach? How can we do this together instead of everybody going in different directions and tugging and pulling? I hope you and the community will see that as a very good sign that we're working together. Um, I think if we also do things and we're all collaborative, we're all in agreement, we're all cooperating, that it will help the community. So uh, I believe the future is bright. I think things are looking really good. Uh, I'm very excited about the uh, prospects we have. And with that, thank you all for coming. And uh, please remember as you leave, when you talk to people, think of the good things and talk about the positives that we have to offer. Um, as we wrap up today, first of all, Kathleen, thank you so much. As you can tell, we're very passionate. We love what we do, and we're making a difference in our students. And Clarence, thank you so much for the support. Um, and, and all of you, thank you for everything that you do, because you, it really is about collaboration and partnerships. But as we end today, we started with the avatars, and remember those were 
simulations, but we have a short video that I want you to see because these are our kids talking about their future, okay? Do we have it, Ruben? I want to be a chef. I want to be an architect. I want to cure cancer. I want to be a teacher. I want to be a crime scene investigator. I've always liked the idea of it and like I love science. I want to major in organizational psychology and then I want like to minor in journalism. My dream is to major in communication and disorders. Well, I want to be a mechanical engineer. Um, I want to become a pediatric oncologist. Like right now, I think I might be a musician. Well, I'm planning to be a child psychologist in the future. Be a veterinarian. My career goal is to become a nurse, a registered nurse. I'm interested in marine biology. A lot of my teachers helped me and they explained to me that I can do this and they motivate me to even do better stuff and um, to work on things that I've never tried before. I recently struggled with confidence issues and self-esteem issues and it gave me the experience to learn that everyone feels the exact same way and I'm not the only one. I felt like they actually cared, that they showed interest in me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, it, made, it made a big difference to me. Oh yeah, we recently went to a trip to USF and I learned that that school is really good for the medical field. So I was like, I decided that I think that's the school I want to go to. I was pretty set on uh, UCF or USF because we've taken field trips there. I've done research for UCF because I know they have a really good forensic um, program. I think a really good college would be University of Florida because they have specifically a cancer center for that career. I have about four in mind. Tell uh, me which ones. Um, Florida Atlantic University, um, UF, mm -hmm. and then um, Full Sail University and Fayetteville State University in North Carolina. Um, I want to work with deaf children. I'm fluent in sign language. So I, my dream is to go to Radford in Virginia and study there and go on with my career. Okay, well, I think it starts first with um, making sure that the kids that act like they don't want to be here and act like they don't want to go to college, I think it starts with them first, um, sitting them one-on-one, -on -one, talking to them. Keep coming with the information that you guys have been giving us, information concerning colleges and careers and uh, what we can do, what we can expect from those colleges and how we can successfully do that. More colleges coming coming to visit our school because we have college you, you can go into the library and visit them I think having more of that to show people that you know this is these are your options you can go anywhere you want to go once in a while you have little sessions and you tell them about college and how good it is to um, go to college and the advantages that you can get from going to college My mother didn't go to college and my dad didn't finish high school. Mm -hmm. He just dropped out and he doesn't, want, he doesn't want me to go through that. I guess from my parents, like I know they, really, they both didn't go to college, but they don't struggle hard. 
but life could be easier with college? No, I plan on going to college. Yeah. I might be the uh, second girl to go to college because my mom didn't or and her mom before that, and I really want to make a difference. My mindset is that I, I will go to college no matter what. There's nothing that's going to change my mind. In my, in my head, college is inevitable to me. It's, ar it's already done. It's going to happen. I just need to do the work to get there, but it's already said and done. to work with computers. I want to write books. I want to be a police officer. I want to be an artist. Every year, I take an opportunity to talk to children and ask them important questions, and I learn so much from them. This is our future. So what can we do to help our children be successful? We want them to have a better future, and the only way that we can actually do this is with your help. You continue sharing with us what the needs are in our community. You provide mentorship. You provide internships. Those are the things that we need for our children. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you being here today. And I want to thank, at the very end of this, uh, Bright House and Brown, Garganeski, Weiss, and DeGresta for sponsoring this. And thank you so much for coming. We appreciate this tremendously. Have a great day.